You're watching Philadelphia Eagles now by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior. Appreciate all of you for watching today's show. And no matter where you are or how you're tuned in, thank you so much for supporting the program. On the docket for today, Eagles have fulfilled 13 spots of their 16-man practice squad. So we're going to go over every single player who's been signed to the practice squad thus far. First, though, it is the final month of August. And we've been in a great sub battle all throughout this month with a couple of divisional foes here in the Dallas Cowboys report and New York Giants now. Let me say this, that August was the best month in the history of Eagles now. So again, I do appreciate that support and you coming by and hanging out with us. But can we close the gap on the Cowboys report on the final day of this month? And can we continue to dominate New York Giants now? If you're in the market for Daily Eagles coverage, this is your go-to spot. It's all interactive, informative, and insightful. Hit that subscribe button right now. So player for player on the Eagles practice squad up to this point. Philadelphia bringing back Devin Allen. And with the 73-yard return in the preseason finale, I think he displayed the special team's value that he can give this team. But I imagine that Brian Johnson and Nick Sirianni are thinking of ways to get creative if Allen were to get activated to the active roster, jet sweeps, bubble screens, wide receiver screens, handoffs, find ways to get him the football and use that Olympic track speed because he's an Olympic speedster that can translate to the NFL level. We saw it in that preseason game in which he started to the left on that opening kickoff, got to the 15, and how often do you see at the NFL level where a guy is able to reverse course get to the other sideline, and then turn it upfield and turn that into a monster game. So many times that happens in high school. doesn't happen at the NFL level. When you have speed that Devin Allen has, that's what he's able to do. I'm excited that his development continues with this organization that gave a chance on him as he restarted his football career last year. Britton Covey also coming back to the birds here. And for Covey, he was playing for this team as the primary returner in the Super Bowl back in February. Clearly, Philadelphia likes him. Very sure-handed player who rarely, if ever, fumbled a punt or fumbled a kick last year. The lack of speed and the lack of size worried me last year because he got hit and thrown around like a rag doll. At Utah, though, he was a threat to take it to the crib any time he put his hands on the football. And I think Philadelphia sees that. And before he hurt his hamstring in training camp, he did make some strides as a wide receiver. It makes sense to bring him back to the practice squad. He can get elevated two times this year to be the team's returner from the practice squad to the game day roster. Makai Garner, another young player who didn't make the initial 53, and that's just a byproduct of the Eagles being really deep in the secondary trace. Can we take a look at the Eagles' secondary depth chart? Because I like where Philadelphia is as we move forward. James Bradbury and Darius Slay were arguably the best cornerback duo in the NFL last year, but they're getting a little bit older. So at some point, you have to start to plan ahead. Josh Job, Eli Ricks, Mario Goodrich, Keely Ringo, and Makai Garner. Those are five corners there, all under the age of 23, who can really help your football team as we move forward in a passing league. I was happy that Garner was able to come back to the Eagles. Offensive lineman Julian Good-Jones. For him, this is an interesting scenario because JGJ can be the backup center for this team if Jason Kelsey were to go down and if Philadelphia wants to maintain Cam Jurgens at that right guard spot because on the opening 53, Jason Kelsey is the only center. Now, we know that Cam Jurgens was drafted to be Kelsey's future replacement when Philadelphia took him in the second round out of Nebraska. But right now, you look at the Eagles' depth chart, Cam Jurgens is the starting right guard. If Kelsey were to get hurt, Jurgens would then start at center, but then Julian Good-Jones would probably be that next player to get activated to the 53. So that's kind of the thought process here with Philadelphia on that front. Taron Jackson, this team is so deep at defensive end and at edge rusher. It made sense that he wasn't able to crack this 53 either because the Eagles are so deep. And it's an embarrassment of riches for Howie Roseman in this organization. And you'd be hard-pressed to find a team with more talent, but also more depth in the trenches along that defensive line. Brandon Graham, Fletcher Cox, 
Juran Davis, Jalen Carter, Josh Sweat, Contavious Street, Moro Ajomo, Marlon Tupulutu, Milton Williams, and Derek Barnett. For Taron Jackson, it's not a knock on him that he couldn't make this team. That just comes down to this team being extremely deep along the defensive line. For linebacker Kyron Johnson, he's kind of your fourth outside linebacker for this team and just another depth piece if an injury were to happen at that spot. Safety Tristan McCollum, Eagles have some safety concerns. So if a Terrell Edmonds, a Justin Evans, a Sidney Brown do struggle, do they look the way of McCollum or do they go external move? I think they go the latter external move, but you need to fill up the practice squad. They do it with Tristan McCollum, who might have long-term potential, kind of like Marcus Epps did for this team, which allowed him to play well last year and then cash in with the Las Vegas Raiders in free agency. A lot of people wanted to see Joseph Nagata come back. The rookie out of Clemson, who is a UDFA, brings this team a size element, a jump ball ability, the 50-50 type of catch where he doesn't have the long-form speed to gain separation from a cornerback, but he can really flourish on some of those back shoulder balls. You throw it up to him on a back corner fade in the end zone. He has that necessary size to go up and get it. I call him a jump ball wide receiver. I want to see this guy continue to develop under the Eagles watch. Aaron Moorhead has done a hell of a job of developing some of these wide receivers. I think that he can do good work with Joseph Nagata. Tight end Brady Russell. You look at the Eagles tight end depth chart. Dallas Goddard, great all-around tight end. You have Jack Stoling, Grant Calcaterra as some backups. And then Philadelphia this week made that trade for Albert Okwa Ibanam. They are legitimately four deep at that tight end spot. And I think that Albert O could surprise a lot of people this year. He might be the most athletic tight end on this roster. Not a good blocker, very good pass catcher, very good athlete in the open field, and a menace to bring down if he's running down that seam or running down the numbers as kind of like a pass-catching tight end who doesn't block at all because, frankly, he's not good at it, even though he's 6'5", 260 pounds. So for Brady Russell, it's kind of that argument and that conversation with Taron Jackson. Like, you don't make the team, but you don't make the team because the Eagles are so deep at that position. But he did have a good training camp, pretty good preseason, could be a player who makes the 53 next year in training camp. The man who everybody is talking about, and we know that kickers are people too. We know that punters are people too. Aaron Sipos. He is back with Philadelphia on the practice squad. Among all punters last year, I think there were 38 qualifying punters. He was like 36 of 38 in average yards per punt. Something along those lines. Frankly, he ain't good. And the Eagles partially lost that Super Bowl because of Aaron Sipos and his ineffectiveness to boot the ball downfield. He shanked that ball to Kadarius Toney. Kadarius Toney was able to pick that ball up like Deshaun Jackson, flip the field, get down to the five. Chiefs punch it in, score that touchdown, and the momentum of that game changed. And with Aaron Sipos, I'd like to see a punter in here who's more consistent, who has a stronger leg, who's better at pinning the ball inside the 20. I'm surprised that Philadelphia hasn't signed another practice squad punter. Right now, he's on the practice squad. If he's punting for this team week one, that's a little bit of an issue. The pressure is on him, but frankly, the pressure's been on him. That's why Philadelphia brought in Ty Zentner as the UDFA out of Kansas State. So with that, we tee up this. Which P-Squad player will have the biggest impact on the 53-man roster this year? Let me know down in the chat. Let's continue to talk about Sip Boss here because Along that same conversation, a lot of people talking about Matt Areza, former punter at San Diego State. The Eagles will not be working out Areza, according to Derek Gunn. And the chatter that I'm hearing, the chatter that is out there and why teams aren't giving him workouts is because the civil suit is open. And that's scaring teams away from Matt Areza who was alleged to be involved in a gang rape allegation at San Diego State. His defense team, and according to a report from Yahoo Sports, did show that he wasn't even there, and the relationship that he had with the woman was a consensual relationship at one point. It's all messy. I used to cover local news back in the day, and when a civil suit is open, that does give teams pause because there could be legal ramifications put on Matt Areza because of that civil suit. But 
Here's what I do know. In 2021 at San Diego State, he was deemed the punt god for a reason. 51 plus yards per punt. That's an FBS record. He had 39 punts of 50 plus yards. Also a record. 18 punts. 18 punts of 60 plus yards. Also a record. If he's found not guilty, and as of right now, that's pretty much been the case. But again, it's the civil suit that's open that has given team pause. But if this guy's ever, ever able to punt at the NFL level with the leg, with the precision, with the power, he can legitimately be a special teams weapon. And if he's found not guilty, and if everything works itself out legally, I want to see a talent like that be able to punt in this league because he's truly one of one. Three more players to get to. Offensive lineman Brett Toth signed to the practice squad. Linebacker Ben Van Sumeren played his college ball at Michigan State and pressed throughout training camp and in the preseason. I think he could be a developmental linebacker for this team. And then wide receiver Greg Ward. It seems as though when you think Greg Ward won't be a part of the Philadelphia Eagles, when you think that he's not going to make the 53, not make the practice squad, he continues to come back. Greg Ward can be a backup wide receiver, can be a returner, and he is very sure-handed, and you can put your trust in him that he can always make a big play if his number is called. The quarterback at Houston has made a pretty solid career for himself at the NFL level at wide receiver. Some conflicting reports on this front. Taewon Mullen, according to Tim McManus of ESPN, he did report that Mullen was signed to the Eagles practice squad, but Philadelphia did not officially include him. But if that is the case, he's the 14th member of the 16-man taxi squad. And Philadelphia, keep in mind here, because a lot of people have questions about this, there might not be a traditional returner on the 53, but the Eagles on game day, can activate a player like Britton Covey or Devin Allen on game day to be the team's returner. So keep an eye out for that and keep that in mind as we approach week one against New England Patriots. Thanks to everybody for watching the show. Don't forget to subscribe. We appreciate your support as always.